All right, let's learn to graph with Excel. First of all, what we're graphing today's data is vapor pressure and temperature data. And we're going to graph, graph the vapor pressure versus the temperature. What do we mean by that? We mean that the vapor pressure is on the y-axis and the temperature is on the x-axis. So we've got our y-axis and our x-axis. Now, some of the keys to Excel is that your x-axis always has to come first. When you're doing a graph and you're going to insert a chart on this, x comes before y. Now, we've got some temperatures here and we've got some vapor pressures. The temperature is in degrees Celsius and the vapor pressure is in Tor. The compound here, by the way, is toluene. All right, so what is our goal? Our goal is to be able to get some data out of it. Some of the things that we want to get are our delta H, a vaporization, our normal boiling point, and some other data. Now, normal boiling point we know is where the temperature, where the vapor pressure is 1 atm. How are we going to get this? We're going to have to graph this and get a best fit line. All right, that's our goal, to graph and get a best fit line. First of all, we can just grab and graph it as it is. To grab it, you're going to start with the left. Um, you're going to click, hold your left um, button down and drag through the bottom data. To go from there, we're simply going to insert. We're going to go to a chart. When we go to our charts, we're going to consistently go to a scatter and we're never going to add our data points in it or our lines in it. We just want the data. And you're going to end up with some awful mess that looks like this. First of all, Excel likes to cross the X and the Y at zero, even though that has no meaning whatsoever scientifically. To fix this, the first thing I'm going to do, to fix this, I'm going to go and click on the X axis. You ask why? Because this is an X axis issue. If I go down here, I can take and I can format my axis. Now I've clicked the X one, so I can format it. I'm going to change such that if we go down here, we are going to notice that the X vertical axis crosses at automatic, that means zero. To fix this, we're going to change it to go to our most negative point, and that is minus 100. So I'm going to type in by hand minus 100, and then I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to shift the axis such that it's on the far corner. Now at some point we're going to want to take and put in labels. So before you really mess around with this too much, you can go over here to this plus and you can add some elements. So we can add our chart title. So I would go toluene. Why not? And once I've gone toluene, I'm going to hit enter and it types it in. I'm going to go into an axis title and it's going to give me options. And on this one, as I do my option here, I can put my vapor pressure. Down here, I can put my temperature. It's nice, it's a pretty good idea to put the units in. So temperature in Celsius, for example, is going to be my data here. Now, I've got my vapor pressure on the Y and my temperature on the X. I know that this is very similar to or looks just like the clausius clapeyron graph, this nice exponential curve as we go up. So how are we going to do this? We can take and we can add a trend line straightforward. Go to the bottom and click on a trend line and you go, well, how can that possibly be helpful? That's a straight line and this is an exponential. Trend lines are clever. Click over here and go to exponential. When you do that, I'm going to go back and delete the mess I had before. And then you go, okay, it sort of fits and it's not bad. All right, it fits down here at the bottom, but we've got more options. So let's do our more options. The most important option that we can do in this mess is to go down here at the bottom. And that is where it says display the equation on the chart. When we take and display the equation on our chart and I've just physically moved it, I actually know what the relationship is. Um, now that didn't do any good because that was my vertical one or my um, linear one, which I don't want. I want my um, exponential. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to format my trend line. I'm going to go to exponential and that's clicked and I'm going to display the equation on the chart. That is better. That's a nice clean exponential. Great. And you go, so what? Well, at this point, you really do have y, you have x, you can plug in data, and you can make some sense out of it. This is not the normal form that we see the Clausius-Clapeyron in. 
the normal form we see the Clausius clapeyron in is linear. So let's mess with this and see if we can get a nice linear graph. So I'm going to delete this and go back to my data. First of all, when we have a Clausius clapeyron graph, what we have got is a x axis is 1 over the temperature in Kelvin, and the y axis is the natural log of the vapor pressure. Let's see if we can figure out how to do this. I want to take my temperature in Celsius and put it in Kelvin. To do that, I'm going to use the math function. That's my f of x right there. And I can just take, click the cell where I want it to go, and hit the equals. And I want that cell to equal my original one right here, plus 273.15. I've got my temperature in Kelvin. Now, I would like it to do everything else in this column. So I can type it in each one, but I'd rather not have to. So I'm going to move my mouse until I get a solid cross in the bottom right corner. When I do that, I've got the fill option. I'm going to left click, drag down, and I'm going to fill it. And if I look at each of these, it's going to say the cell that I started with adding 273.15. Now, I can take and do some graphing. I can graph the temperature in Kelvin versus the vapor pressure. To do this, I'm going to click and drag down the x-axis. I'm going to hit the control button and click and drag down the y-axis that I need. Once more, click and drag down my x-axis. My temperature is always going to be x. Hold down the control button, press the left of your click, and drag down the vapor pressure in Tor. We can go to insert, we can go to charts, scatter, and put one in. And I have, again, a nice exponential. And all I did was shift this whole thing by 273.15. I'm going to add a trend line. I'm going to choose exponential because linear makes no sense. I'm going to scroll down and display the equation on the chart and put it where I can see it. I'm going to add the axes as I need them. And that's great, but I've got a messy exponential equation, and what I really want is the enthalpy of vaporization. So, how am I going to get this? Let's delete this sucker as well. What I'd really like is 1 over the temperature in Kelvin versus the natural log of the vapor pressure. How are we going to do that? We're going to take and click on where I want the temperature data to be. I'm going to hit equals 1, that slash for divide by, and I'm going to hit the cell that contains the temperature in Kelvin. When I hit equals, I'm going to get 1 divided by the temperature in kelvins. I'm going to move my mouse to the right corner of the cell that I'm in, click and drag down. I'm going to fill this entire column with 1 divided by the temperature in kelvin. Now I'm going to take the natural log of the vapor pressure. Natural log requires parentheses, and all of this requires equal signs. So hit equals, hit ln for natural log, and open parentheses. I want the natural log of the vapor pressure, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hit the close parenthesis, and I'm going to hit enter. Note through all this mess, your biggest friend is control Z, because control Z is undo. It's gone. One more time. Equals ln for natural log of the data I want, which is the vapor pressure and tor, and parentheses. Hit enter. Click again. Move my mouse to the bottom right hand corner of the cell, click and drag down, and I've got my data filled. Now, what do I have? In this column, 1 over the temperature in Kelvin, I want that for my x. So I'm going to start with it on the left. I'm going to press the control button, click and drag down the natural log of the vapor pressure, and I'm going to graph these two. Note, the vapor pressure in the middle has not been selected. Once again, 1 over the temperature in Kelvin, I've clicked and dragged down. I have now I'm now going to press the control button. I'm holding control down. I'm clicking the left on the mouse and clicking and dragging down my natural log of the vapor pressure. I'm choosing the columns or the labels at the top of each of these columns because it helps a little in the viewing of the graph. Insert, charts, scatter, and now I have a straight line. I have an ugly line, but nonetheless I have a line. So what are we going to do? We're going to fix the axis. First thing we're going to do is move it so the zero crosses at zero. The x-axis is now crossing at a weird spot, so I'm going to click on the y. I know that's backwards. Talk to Bill Gates. Don't talk to me. Format axis. When I go to my format axis, I notice that the horizontal axis over here crosses at automatic. I don't want automatic. I want to have it cross at the bottom. 
which in this case is minus 6. So I'm going to change my axis value to minus 6. I'm going to hit enter, and my 0 goes back where it belongs. And now note, please, this space here in the middle is completely empty space between 0 and 0 0.003. I'm going to get and remove that. To do that, I'm going to click down here where it says horizontal x-axis. I'm going to move my mouse until that, that comes in. I'm going to click on Format My X-Axis. When I do that, I realize that because it's Excel, it wants to start everything at zero. I don't want it to start at zero. I want my minimum on my x-axis to be 0 0.003. Why? Because that is my smallest value. So I'm switching my minimum to 0 0.003, and I'm going to hit Enter, and now my graph takes up the entire space. So things we can do. We can add our axis titles. And now the most important thing we're going to add is a trend line. Once I add my trend line here, if I go to my trend line, it's going to give me a nice linear one. It fits beautifully. I'm going to go into more options. And one of my options over here when I get this is that I can display my equation on the chart. I now have a nice equation for the linear fit of this data. What do we do? At this point, save this guy. You're going to need it for the rest of your calculations. The next thing you're going to do is look at this and realize you can calculate a great deal off of this. When we have the Clausius clapron, such that we have the form of y is equal to mx plus b, we realize that m is equal to the minus, note the minus sign there, delta h of vaporization divided by r, the gas constant. What does this mean? This means that we can set our slope value, which is equal to minus 4643.3 is going to equal the minus delta H of vaporization over r. Realize that r here It's trying to, I put an equal sign in there so now it's being cranky. Please realize that R is the gas constant, and R is going to have a value of 8.314 joules per k-mole. Once you have this, you can solve for pretty much anything that you need because... It's being very cranky here. I apologize for this. R is equal to 8.314 joules per K mole. Given that you have R, you have the value for the slope right here from your straight line, you can now solve for the enthalpy of vaporization, recognizing here that Y is the natural log of the vapor pressure, and X is equal to 1 over the temperature in Kelvin. All right, with this, you should be able to put this together and solve for what you need to on your graphing with Excel plot.